Bruchem Aboim. We are now on the 23rd uh, lecture on our series in Gematrias. And um, we're dealing with the number 20, Chaf. Uh, the number Chaf, uh, which is in Hebrew, Esrim, has a numerical value of 20. And it alludes to full maturity. When a boy reaches the age of 13, that's physical maturity, he becomes culpable for all of his actions when being judged by the earthly court. However, the heavenly court only judges a man from the age of 20, which is full intellectual maturity. Now, the word ish, meaning man, alludes to a person from the age of 13. Once he reaches the age of 20, he is then referred to as a gever. So again, ish 13, gever 20. 20 is the age when a man is inducted into military service. Again, today in Israel it's a little bit different, so as it is in the United States at 18. But in olden times, in the time of the temple, uh, the Jews were inducted into the army from the age of 20, and they served to the age of 60, so whenever there was a need for soldiers, anyone 20 to 60. When Adam and Chava were created, it's always a question, how old were they? And the answer given is they were formed as fully mature 20-year-old adults. Same thing with Cain uh, and Heaven. They quickly became adults after they were born. When the Torah describes Sarah, Sarah's years, Sarah our mother, they are divided into hundreds and tens and single units. Rashi there states in, in uh, verse number 23, chapter number 23, verse number 1, in the opening verse of, in the portion of Chai Sarah, that when Sarah was a hundred years old, she was equivalent to a 20-year-old who was free of sin in the eyes of heaven. And again, we know that a hundred is if, it says in Pirkei Avos in chapter, the end of chapter five, that a hundred is like you're dead. So again, so she was pure on both ends, that she had no sin. In the laws of Erechon, when one pledges a donation to the temple based on the valuation of another person, the classification of an adult male is from the age of 20 years old, again 20 to 60. When the children of Israel sinned with the spies, then the decree was passed to all of those between the ages of 20 to 60 who would die in the desert and not enter the Holy Land of Israel. Now 20 can be divided into 10 plus 10. The first number 10 alludes to the 10 utterances which, which God created the world. And the second 10 represents the 10 commandments and together they become a chaf. Now, the basic currency used by the Torah was the shekel, which was made up of 20 geira. According to Shemos Rabbah, Moshe was 20 years old when he left the palace of Paro to witness firsthand the bitter oppression of his people by the Egyptians and their slavery. Now, Yaakov worked for Lovan for 20 years, seven for Leah, seven for Rachel, and then six for his livelihood to be to make money. Yosef's brother sold him to the Midianites, who then sold him in, in Egypt for 20 pieces of silver, again, which they split up among themselves to buy shoes. The maximum height of a sukkah is 20 cubits. Anything above that an eye does not see. Every human being has 10 fingers and 10, to 10 toes. Again, 20. In Pirkei Avot, in chapter 5, verse 22, at the end, it states, Ben Shmona Esve Lechupa, that 18 years old is the age for marriage. The Talmud and Kedushan 29b states that one age 20 and unmarried is doomed to spend all his days in sinful thought. It also states in the Mishnah, in Esrim Lerdov, that the 20 year old is for pursuit, which refers to making a living. Once he is married, it becomes his responsibility to support his wife and children, which is written into the Ksuba, the marriage contract. So once a man reaches the age of 20, he then shoulders the complete responsibility and accountability for caring for himself, his family, his country, and a true commitment to God Almighty. The Ramban states that the higher neshama, component of the soul, is said to enter man's body when he reaches the age of 20 
based on the Zohar, even though there is a lower form of neshama that enters when he's 13. Now the word chaf means bent. The word kaf alludes to many things. Again, there is with a dot and without a dot a chaf and a kaf. Kaf is a spoon, kaf yodayim, the palm of one's hand, kaf raglayim, the sole of one's feet, kaf tamarim, a palm branch, kaf yerech, a hip socket. And just as kaf stands, kaf stands for a bent object, kafuf means a person who is bowed down, which alludes to a person who is bent down in humility. That, that the trait that is most precious to God Almighty. When a chaf appears at the end of a word, it has a different shape, different form. Instead of being bent, it becomes long and a straight letter. This is an illusion that if one succeeds in bending his primitive impulses and controlling them, as symbolized by the bent chaf, then he will merit siyata deshmaya, divine assistance to rise to the limit of his potential symbolized by the straight chaf. If you take the word esrim, again, which I mentioned means 20, and add up its letters, you arrive at 620. You have ayin, which is 70, shin, which is 300, resh, which is 200, yud, which is 10, and mem, which is 40. Altogether, they are 620. And 620 is the gematria, the numerical value of the word keser, which means crown. At the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, God crowned the Jewish nation by giving them the Torah. In fact, there's a medrash that says the angels gave each Jew two crowns, one for Nasa and one for Nishma, one for we will do and the second for we will listen. Now the gematria of the word keser, again, which I mentioned is 620, also alludes to the totality of the mitzvot. As we know, there were Taryag 630 Torahic mitzvahs that were given to us in the Torah. And there were seven rabbinic laws. Um, it was seven and seven together with 613 is 620, again, Keser. <clears throat> 620 is also the gematri of the word Sam Chaim Umavis, a, a potion of life or death, telling us that the very same mitzvah can be both a potion of life or death. As it says, whatever a person searches for. The way a person wants to go, they lead him. It's amazing. Somehow, some way, Yeruvim ben Nevad, who took the ten tribes away from the nation and started what was called Malchus Yisrael, the kingdom, that he was a great controversy, and he actually put up the temple. He didn't want the Jews to go back to the temple in Jerusalem. He put up two temples, one in Dun and one in Basel and found all new holidays in the Torah. And somehow he, he erected golden calves in these. And again, he was able to convince the people. Again, you have to understand it was a time of idolatry. Now the last words of the Ten Commandments are, Asher l'reyecha, which are to your companion. These seven letters correspond to the seven rabbinic commandments that are added to the 613 Torahic commandments. Again, 620. The very last letter of the Ten Commandments is a chaf which is the final chaf of the word re'acha to your companion. And this corresponds to the last rabbinic commandment, which is the mitzvah of lighting Hanukkah candles. Each one of these seven additional commandments are like precious jewels in the crown of God. The final stone of Hanukkah is that which completes the splendor and majesty of the divine crown. In Pirkei Avot, chapter 4, Mishnah 17, it states, that there are three crowns. The crown of priesthood, the crown of kingship, the crown of Torah. However, there's a fourth crown, the crown of a good name that rests above all of them, which is the crown of addition to it. As Shlomo Melech said in Kohelet, Tov Shein, Hashem The good name is better than good oil. Now the, la the first letter of the Ten Commandments begins with an olive. And the last letter is a cup, Reach. The Aleph, one, alludes to one thinking only of himself, and the Chaf, meaning you, is an illusion that after one involves himself in keeping all of the mitzvot, the Ten Commandments, he is now able to think about someone else, you. So it begins with I, and ends with you. Selfish, and then being able to be a giver, to actually put someone else first.
Now the concept of submission and humility can be seen in the first word of the Ten Commandments. The word nochi and ani both mean I in Hivrit. When a person uses the word ani, I, he's exhibiting egotism. However, how does one overcome that trait of egotism? By adding a chaf to the word ani and making it the word anochi. One thereby transforms his ego into humility by bending to the will of his creator. Now the shape of a shofar, uh, a horn that we blow on Rosh Hashanah, which basically symbolizes a call for tshuva, for repentance, must, according to one halachic opinion, have a bent shape, cannot be straight. This is an illusion that a person must be bent, meaning humble, for his repentance to be accepted. As we say in the morning blessings every day, that Hashem zokev kafufim, God straightens those that are bent. However, the shofar that was blown in the temple on the Yovel, on the Jubilee year, that was long and straight. As we know, on the Jubilee year, once every 50 years was the time when all the slaves were free. original owners. Again, a symbol of freedom. The blowing of the shofar in Rosh Hashanah is introduced with the verse from Tehillim. Kol ha'amim tiku chaf which means all the nations join hands. The Chazan Sion knows that the gematria of the word chaf, hand, is 100 which alludes to the 100 blasts of the shofar which we blow on Rosh Hashanah. Now after Sarah's death the Torah tells us that Abraham Avinu, Abraham, came to mourn for Sarah and live kosa, which means to cry for her. It's strange, because in the word live kosa, the chaf is smaller than the rest of the letters of the word. This was to tell us that Abraham Avinu's expression of grief was constrained. The righteous person knows that the soul is immortal. Death is only a temporary separation. In time, we will all be united together. In fact, death really is the continuation of life, much like the baby in the womb that dies in the womb and comes and continues life in this world. So too, death. May God help us to reach the level of Kesser, of, 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 of the crown, through our humility and submission to Him, God Almighty. And with that trait, may we merit the coming of Mashiach Sikhenu quickly. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a good Shabbos.